stürmt oder schneit, ob die Sonne uns lacht, der Tag blüht heiß. So, welcome to this strategic session about Kia 41. And I wanted this session to share with you some basic concept uh, about the key concept to win a game as the Germans first and then after with the Soviets. All the concerns we are talking about regard the campaign game. So starting from uh, turn one, which is the beginning of July, till the end of 41, December 41. Uh, how to win the game? Rules state that uh, to win the game, the Germans must seize seven victory areas. And they start with one, which is Tarnopol. Tuesday they need Kiev, the Nepropetrovsk. Then they need to go on the other side of the Dnieper to get Kharkov, Rostov, and then Maikov and Sevastopol. The task is ambitious. So, first of all, you should be prepared to a start of alternative victory condition, which is uh, demolish the Red Army, get and hold five victory cities uh, during the, so the Soviet winter counteroffensive. What does that mean? Uh, this means that you have to keep Tarnopol, of course, get Kiev, Dnepropetrovsk, Kharkov, and Rostov. Uh, only after you have demolished the Red Army in a campaign of encirclement, because you have to remember that in this game, eliminated Soviet units will come back because they will be added to the Soviet reinforcements pool and they will be randomly drove and rebuilt into the game system. So the best way to avoid that each unit, uh, each Soviet unit that you destroy will come back, the best way is to eliminate it by forcing to surrender, uh, as it was in reality. So you have to make the first choice be between these two legs. The first one I said is to get seven. Get seven is very hard, nearly impossible against an experienced solid player. So you probably have to take into some considerations plan B, which is uh, get five, but only after having demolished the Red Army and then hold at least four, so in the end you will be forced to give Rostov up and win because at the end of the game you hold more victory areas than the Soviets, four versus, versus three. So uh, the way you choose for um, winning the game really makes the main important difference at the beginning of your game. If you start with plan A, you can then switch maybe to plan B, but if you start with plan B, it will be very difficult to switch to plan A. It, plan a. it is a, a matter of quickness of your advance. So, <clears throat> uh, one thing, both plans have, um, have uh, sorry, uh, the two plans are different but they have similar content. Let's see a couple of things. Uh, let's start with uh, your headquarters and with calling for reinforcements and using the exploitation. Those are the mix you need to consider first. So let's have a look at your leaders and let me take the initiative disk. Uh, 
19. Your logistics video. At the beginning of the game, the Germans have Hitler at full strength, so it is four logistics points, and you have one, two, three, four, five, six, plus Guderian, seven leaders, so it is four plus seven, eleven, plus one for the flag. So you have 12 logistic points. This means that uh, um, if you now you call for reinforcements by spending the disc, you can draw 12 units from your reinforcement pool. Uh, the bad point of this uh, strategy is that you will give the initiative disc to the Soviets and then they can call for reinforcement as well and they will be able to deploy a mass of units because they have a high logistics value at the beginning of the game because they all they have stand, they hold six flags, they have the fleet, they... I mean, it's a mess. So, as you understand, this is the first thing you don't have to do with the Germans. But you have to plan a prepare your future for being in the position that when you call for reinforcements or when you use the disc for the exploitations, the Soviets are already on their knees. Knees. So, my first goal with the Germans is get an extra point logistic point by eliminating by surrender 10 Soviet blocks. The easiest way to do this is probably to encircle these Soviet blocks in this area. How? Uh, you have to very well manage both your uh, German commanders both your Romanian commanders, including the Luftwaffe and the 11th Army deployed in Romania. Uh, on the front line, you have more and better commanders. So, if the Soviets decide to hold on and they do not retreat, in the end they will be encircled. Of course, this will not happen against a very experienced Soviet players. That player, that kind of player, will probably give ground up for time, will sacrifice some blocks, a new spool, blocks as speed bumps, and retreat with the bulk of his forces. So this is another point, where to attack, where to break the resistance, and when and where to try to cut off enemy forces. The answer is easy. Avoid defensive lines. Each time you see a defensive line, turn around. Avoid four blocks. Each time you see four blocks, those are very good to be encircled, not to be destroyed. Because if you eliminate them, they will come back later. So the best way is always avoid strong unit, strong solid concentrations and avoid defensive lines. Instead, go for very uh, I cannot see the entity of the block because of the fog of war, but at least I know that this is only one block and it is, of course, less power, <laughs> power um, uh, of the, those four. So, the basic idea is find weak enemy spots, crush it, crush it and then move your panzers with blitz. Use your exploitation opportunity only if you can get six, seven, eight, or even more Soviet blocks to get and circle it. Because then after the disc will pass to the Soviets, and you will find that you could be in trouble if you don't have carefully planned your move. So we have been talking of strategy. Let's go back to strategy. What do you want to do by the end of July with the Germans? With the Germans, uh, you need to encircle Kiev by the end of July. 
uh, I'm not saying that you have to seize Kiev by the end of July, but you have to cut it off. Uh, this way you will prevent uh, the Soviet player to reinforce Kiev or simply to make to turning his troops over, exchange, put fresh troops in, and so on. Another thing you need to do in July is get adjacent to Odessa. It, it really doesn't matter, but where? This is a very good spot, so it is area 800, but you need to get adjacent to Odessa by the end of July. Uh, small tips to get you in the mood. Do not overactivate your commanders. You will not have enough logistics point to get them at full strength at the end of the month. About the Romanians, remember that they just have three stars, so do not activate them twice each during the same month, unless you can get a very uh, <coughs> concrete result. Why? Because once they go at heart level, they do not count for logistics value. So you will find yourself in a very bad logistic situation. So it is very good to keep both the Romanians commanders at two, so they do count for your logistics value, and then rebuild them at full strength each turn. In this way you can move your Romanians during all the turns. Keep in mind that the Romanians have, do have a tangible formation. I mean, you have some interesting units with them and they really can help you in doing the Odessa job and then later break the Crimean Isthmus and see Sebastopol. So do not waste your Romanians, do not send them into um, um, I would say do not land do not use them as ca your cannon folders. Those are your best ally and your best friend, especially along the Black Sea coast. About the Luft Waffe, you start with only one, so, so you desperate need the second one. In this way, you can count on a massive Luftwaffe um, deployment of bombers, and they really can help you to break strong points such as Kiev or Odessa itself. Because as you can understand, at the end of July, I said you need to get adjacent to Odessa and get Kiev cut off from Mother Russia. What about August? In August, you have to rebuild your army at full strength. This is mandatory. Sorry, mandatory. What does it mean? Uh, without cheating, of course. Uh, what does it mean? That you don't have to waste your troops in unuseful attacks during July term. And you have to keep in mind that your logistics value is limited. It will be probably 16 or something like that, but that's good. To rebuild your commanders and your combat units. Why? Because August will be the critical month of your uh, campaign. In August, you have a wonderful timeline of good weather and you will probably have all your commanders, including the 17th Army, deployed in the field with the Luftwaffe, with the 2nd Luftwaffe at quarter. And that means that you can probably overthrow Soviet resistance across the Dnieper and encircle Dnepropetrovsk. As you can say, I'm not talking of Kiev nor about Odessa. Why? 
because in this way you are playing a nasty game against the Soviets. Instead of getting those two uh, areas, you have already uh, engaged probably and then circled, you are putting, shifting the Soviet attention to another hotspot, which is the center. This way, the Soviet player will be forced to enlarge his defensive lines and he will not probably be able to defend what? The Dnepr. Instead, if you get Odessa and Kiev before crossing the Dnepr, you will find that the Soviets then will, 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 uh, will put all his energy to defend the Dnepr. That said, once you have crossed the Dnieper and uh, encircled Dnieper Petrovsk, grab your success. Then it's the point to finish the Kiev job, the Odessa job, the Dnieper Petrovsk job. And then after, get, expand your bridgehead on the other side of the Dnieper. You have to finish the month of August adjacent to Kharkov and you have to make a break to, into the Crimean Isthmus and you have to get Gorlovka. If you finish August this way, you can then in September and see called Kharkov and get it off. Crush Rostov with a bloody and direct assault. You will need probably all your Luftwaffe to finish Rostov because it is a very tough um, spot to crack. Uh, invade Crimea. Then after, what else? October. October you will probably have variable weather. So you don't have to waste other time. Put Sevastopol under siege and go ahead for the Kuban River. Cross it as soon as possible. Cut all the supply lines of Maikop in the Caucasus and get Novorossis. At that point, there will be nothing the Soviets can do. I mean, it is just a matter of time. Of course, they will be able probably to mount counterattacks on your not exposed flanks, but that's part of the job. If you want to gain something, you have to risk something. So I hope you will find this basic strategy guide of any use during um, your German game and uh, enjoy the game. So let's have a look at the Soviet strategy. Basically, what the Soviets have to do, but I would say what the Soviets do, don't have to do at the beginning of the game. Uh, well, um, which are your best allies? First one, this flag. Remember that you already control six victory areas, so you only need to get Tarnopol to win the game instantly. Uh, the best way, this is your best threat, because um, if the Germans do not carefully plan what they do, and especially if they expand their strategic move or the call for reinforcements then you can turn this into your final blow to get Chernobyl. So uh, it is undoubtedly undoubtable that of all the three games of the Barbarossa trilogy this one is the one where 
you can really make the difference as it was historic because you have the strong formations deployed in this sector of the front because you are ready to put in play your MP41 plan and you are ready to encircle the Germans. Uh, the Germans, uh, that does not mean that the Romanians are not terrible. Well, they, they are not terrible in fact, but uh, they can be annoying when paired with the Germans' counterpart, especially if supported by the Luftwaffe, but your main concern comes to the northern sector from Tarnobi, where the 6th Army and the 1st Panzer Group of Clays are deployed. Especially if then the 17th Army will uh, come in as a reinforcement in uh, August, or maybe in July, who knows. So, this is your first line, paired with this probably, but even without, because sometimes the Germans are a bit too bold in their move. Your second best ally, defensive lines. Five are already deployed in the game, at the game start, and 15 are available for you to be built where and when you desire. So use them wisely because once they are all deployed, it is true that you can remove an already deployed defensive line, but there are some penalties about that. So let's keep it as your last chance. Why defensive lines? Because they allow you to absorb enemy hit without your unit being reduced and because you provide the enemy from panzer attack in green areas so of course the best place to deploy a defensive line is in a green area the third ally reinforcements you have a solid base of reinforcements already available from uh, the start and more will come in september also, each eliminated unit of yours will become available as reinforcement, unless it has been encircled. So that's a point we are going to touch now. Uh, the Germans do not have this solid base of reinforcement. What you have to really care about is don't get your units encircled because eliminated units for surrendering do not come back into your reinforcement pool. And this is exactly what you don't want. Uh, let's go on. Um, let's talk a bit about the initial strategy. As you can see, at the start of the game, you have two leaders, one is uh, is sorry one is the south uh, western front here and the other one is the south front here you have also another one the Kharkov front here and another one here but we, we don't care about those two now you have to do count on the two up front uh, leaders to set up your defense how and when well it is very hard to give you a suggestion first because it, it is the Germans to move first and second because mm, it depends on on your um, gaming style there are Soviet players which are very very aggressive and this is something I disencourage at the beginning of the game but others are relatively aggressively and that could be good others are defensive others are extremely defensive that's something I discourage as well so probably in the right middle what does it mean uh, try to use your units some of your units infantry especially to build defensive lines in place and withdraw with your tanks which ones especially those at um, remnant level because they are unuseful 
They cannot build a defensive line. They are very weak in combat, and if eliminated, they will come back as remnant, which is annoying. So, those things are the units you have to pull out from the front line and rescue in the rear, so you can smoothly rebuild later, turn by turn, and after a couple of turns, they will start paying dividends. Instead, if they get eliminated, uh, you will have an issue which uh, will come back the next month. So, the other very good thing is defend this area. Area 78, Belaya Zerko, the airport of Kiev. If you lose this area, you are probably going to lose Kiev sooner or later. And later, always the better. <laughs> the better. Uh, third thing, try to deploy your commanders into the central position. Do you remember Napoleon? It's the same. If they remain on the side, uh, they will lose command ability. They will not be able to command your farther units. And I, I do understand you when you say, hey, I have a lot of units. Who cares if I lose a couple? Uh, well, a couple now, a couple next impulse, a couple the other impulse, and then a couple more. <laughs> you will be short of eight units in a row. Uh, that's something I would not be happy if I were you. So, say all of your units, but most important, do not lose your commanders. It is okay if you lose them for for combat, so in combat, but if they are eliminated by surrendering, means that they are gone in the German um, hands forever. So, these, these are the first things. Um, spots you have to defend. Uh, as I said, Belaya Zerkov, and then the corridor of Vinitsa. Now, here we have a trick because it is okay to defend the corridor of Vinitsa, but don't get all of your Bessarabian deployed units encircled. Okay, I, I can imagine what you are going to say. Hey, Odessa is, a, is an arbor, I can supply them all. Yes, for a while, but then after, when Odessa will fall, or even later, when the Germans will try to cross the Dnieper, you will need those southern front units here instead of there along the Prut or in Romania. About Romania, oh yes, there is a chance to get the Romanians some headache and you can eliminate a couple or maybe three or four Romanian units from the game that's not really your scope, but can probably help you. Uh, what I mean is that concentrate on the main team. The main team of the game is Kiev. So whatever you are going to do during the early stage of the game is to protect Kiev. Kiev already grants, sorry, uh, gives you a lot of privileges in the game. So you can uh, supply your units from the border. You can pump your logistics value up, you can select the first reinforcement you draw, uh, you can play with multiple leaders, I mean, I mean, there are a lot of things. So, your main concern must be here. Keep it as long as you can, September, I would say. Uh, sometimes it could happen that you can hold Kiev till October, that's excellent, <clears throat> but what after? Because there will be an after, probably. Kiev cannot hold indefinitely. So at a certain point, the Germans will try to um, cross the Dnieper. Well, the Dnieper is one of your best allies because it is the only river which uh, breaks the map in two. And so defending the Dnieper river is defending at least half of the map 
and it is defending Michael, Karko, Rosto, Sevastopol, and probably the Necropetrovsk. So uh, it is very important you keep on defending the Dnieper. Unfortunately, if you defend the Dnieper, let's say with some units, at least one plus a defensive line, you will discover that you will not have that many defensive lines remaining. But it's part of the job. Uh, where the Germans will try to cross the Dnieper? Here. Historically, they did it in this area, so we are not that far. But they will probably try to cross the Dnieper here because then from this area they can both or either encircle the Dnepropetrovsk and force you to abandon this city without fighting or toward or point toward Kharkov. Whatever is when they seize and establish a bridge, a beachhead here, hmm, it's nasty. It probably means that you are going to, to lose your grip on the river. And that is also a good point to demolish your defensive uh, formations from the river and establish a new one. Where? Well, you have to defend Kharkov using the terrain as as much as you can. You have to defend Rostov using the Mews as much as you can. But unfortunately, there is a, a gap in the middle, and probably the Germans will try to exploit exactly this gap in the middle. Of course, this area of the Isthmus are very, very good to be defended, and you can count on your fleet. Uh, what else? Uh, try to keep the Germans at the bay. Try to alternate your commanders, your main two commanders in activation and do not exhaust them because otherwise they will not count for your logistics failure. Uh, if you are lucky to get this, your main concern is to use it to deploy reinforcements when you have the highest logistics values possible. So do not use it uh, without care as soon as you get it. Do count, wait, and of course, uh, do not uh, deploy reinforcements when you better have to fill a gap because otherwise the Germans will exploit that gap. So it is usually uh, wise to use it when the Germans have exhausted their push during that month and when you still have such a higher logistics value. Okay, I understand that usually those two things do not come together, but we can always uh, hope the best. What about for the reminder of the game? Well, uh, if you can hold this line, that's very good because then you will be probably able to mount, to, to build a very nasty attacking force in your nursery, the tree area where the Germans cannot enter. So from there you can either go for Kharkov or encircle Rostov. But then you have to defend this area because if the Germans break and get Rostov, they will probably head for the Caucasus and Michael. And your supply lines do not go that far. So your last resistance spot will be Novorossiysk because it's the last armor. If you lose Novorossiysk, you will also put Sevastopol in C in full siege conditions, which means that you are going probably to lose Sevastopol as well. So uh, do not allow the Germans to cross the Don south of Rostov. Losing Rostov is okay, it happened historically in November, but 
be prepared to mount a counterattack to get it back. And whatever the case, build a very strong defense on the southern river of the Don, south of Rostov. If the Germans break, there is probably not that much you can do and the game is over. So keep in mind those things. Be patient. First, remember we try your best alive and keep in mind that you are not making the game. The Germans are making the game. So as soon as you are alive and you keep a high logistics value, you can still put a shamble into the enemy lines. Once you're, you have lose 30 or 40 units and your logistics value is down and you have lost by surrendering a couple of your commanders, um, your prospect is to lose the game. So protect your leaders, protect your best units, send them, send uh, the remnants back so you can rebuild them, use your defensive lines and wisely play the initiative disc if you have it, defend the hot spot we have mentioned, and of course, good luck with the dice. Play solitaire or with your friends.